Genetic potential, the defining source of an athlete's talent and performance. What is it and how do we go about understanding it? Tending to it and ultimately unleashing it. We want to really get to the bottom of what we're seeing in the world. We are running drills, we're testing ideas, putting theories down. Of these are the essential questions to be asked and answered on the Genetic Potential Show. Hey, welcome back to GPTV. Have we got a good one for you today? Forrest Griffin, former lightweight, heavy, light heavyweight, light heavyweight world champion, UFC world champion. 205 pounds. Um, joining us. Uh, we've known Forrest for a couple years, and there are very few people who are as funny, articulate, and scary all at the motion. Forrest I, plays a game where he's like, oh, I'm just this innocent guy, and the whole time he's figuring out how he can... I'd say the first time we met him was fairly shocking and how funny that got and how things changed. And Unbelievable athlete, which leads us to one of the things I think the setup right now. Um, we, in the news this week, Kobe Bryant has torn his Achilles. 35-year-old, um, one of the best athletes on the planet, forced to travel... We don't know what his nutrition looks like, the stress, his endorsements, still plays at a high level. How does, I mean, we think that the, the Achilles tear is a preventable problem. How do you manage all that? Um, you don't box jump. Um, I'm kidding, but <laughs> uh, it, um, I, I think it comes down to a, a whole ton of variables that we could look at, including the diet, mechanics. Uh, travel schedule, hydration, et cetera, et cetera. And one of those things going wrong can set up a whole spiral. And I mean, one of the things we do see with a lot of these basketball players, at least what I've watched, is they all have really poor mechanics t to some degree with shooting, with moving, and, uh, you know, it, how long... How long, if, how, how long are you going to last? Even if it's over tension, just systems that are too Absolutely. tight. Absolutely. Because I'm dehydrated, because I've... I'm a little bit stiff because I'm inflamed, because, right? It's right. difficult. So right. one of the things that we're seeing now is um, how do we take these athletes? Because Kobe, at age 35, may be a slight bit slower, but that guy's been playing basketball for so long, he's almost impossible to beat. Yeah. How long was Jordan playing? You know, how long? I mean, but, so we take a look at a lot of these athletes, and it's like we have great, phenomenal athletes, but how long before something that you've been doing catches up to you. And that's really it, catches way. up. You know, you can buffer bad diet, yep. bad position, bad mechanics until you can't. So the real question is we're seeing is the best athletes in the world are getting better at the 1%, the 2%, these small details, managing those things because that becomes the difference of playing another five years I, and, and I, escaping uninjured. I truly believe it's going to be the athlete who's that younger athlete, the 20-year-old, the 21-year-old, who really starts to take a look at all this stuff and is going to inevitably last the longest for what we see and not only dealing with nutrition but mechanics and all these things versus where we see the younger kids who can get away with so much and then all of a sudden as we age, it start, and I'm as guilty of this as anybody, to where it now starts to really matter about what I'm putting in my body, how hydrated, how, I, am. How hydrated I am, That's right. how I'm moving. I don't want my, you know, I don't want to have my, sho my, my shoulder worked on. I don't want to have all these things done. I, you know, I want to be able to survive and I want to be able to do this well. People will say, hey, it's just a matter of time. But yet the UCLA gymnastics has had a couple bad Achilles tears this year. Those are like the best athletes, the national champions, best athletes on the planet. That's happening to them, happen up, is it inevitable? or is it preventable? This is the, the question. I've got to manage all those details. I, I'm 100% of the preventable type, and uh, you know, sure, we could use our case study with the girls at San Jose State this last year, right? Not one injury, not one shoulder injury. One injury occurred in the entire season. Um, bike and, injury. Huh? Bike Bi injury. All right, bike injury. <laughs> there are bike but, gang. So I think that sets up the state, because here we have Forrest Griffin join us, 35. Yep. Started fighting in 2000, so literally uh, 13 years of professional level fighting, world champion, fights the best in athletes, still good, still has the, the drive and the capacity and the abilities. How does he keep doing? I think we're going to get into some really we, interesting conversations we'll about that. Really get into that one. But before we go, we just want to take a second and acknowledge all of our friends and loved ones and family uh, at Boston. Um, Boston Marathon, we have some friends who are directly impacted by this, like you do, and uh, this show is dedicated to those folks and all the first responders and badasses who uh, 
who rushed in and uh, put themselves on the line. We appreciate you guys and love you guys. Can't thank you enough. Forrest Griffin, coming up. Hold on to your butts. Let's do this. GPTV, back in a second. Okay, guys, you want to get a hold of us, you want to get more involved, here's how you're going to do it. Hit us on Facebook. Send us your best picture of the worst thing you're seeing during the week. Twitter, at GP Television. Hashtag Leopard Fail. Hashtag I See More Potential. And then, of course, hashtag GPTV. Hey, welcome back to Genetic Prowess TV. We prowess. Are, really, prowess. He's really renamed it. Show. Well, that's the, really the mark of uh, any good guest. We've got Forrest Griffin on. Uh, I don't know if you know him. You probably do. You've seen him on his own uh, TV specials. You've seen him uh, in the Olympics competing in synchronized swimming, solo synchronized right. swimming. Um, honestly, one of the one of the kind of most talented all-around athletes we've ever met, and we're delighted to have him on the show talking about all things that are important to him. So welcome. Well, it's good to be here. I don't know what's important to me. What is important to you? So what? what well, well what, the reason I came is because I want to be healthier, and not like healthier in the sense of, uh, you know, eating and sleeping, but like movement. You know, well, movement healthy. This uh, sitting with these lights, it's like a grow light. This is actually how we. Uh, how I already we feel glow light. I already feel just from the brief amount of your book that I've read. I'm sitting wrong. Let, like, let, I'm probably doing you, permanent damage to my spine <laughs> right now. Let me, let me ask you this question. I, I have Sorry. noticed that you are sitting a little perkier. Do you I'm think... Tr I'm trying. I mean, so we are on film. We, we, uh, we both met Forrest because Forrest uh, is good friends with our publisher. Yes. We started hanging out. We are dirty dancing one time in Vegas. And we're just going to say friends. Friends. More. All right. So just friends, not benefits, but friends. And uh, that's how we started kind of having this conversation. You found the book because you also know my co-writer Glenn who's a fighter and yeah. uh, and um, the real question is now do you think the book is more effective if you put it in the microwave and heat it up or if you put it in the freezer and hold it on yourself so now we, we were having I'm, I'm gonna go with actual consumption of the book like, so you know how when you're a kid you yeah, slept with yeah, the book yeah, under your head yeah. thinking you would absorb some knowledge I'm actually gonna eat your book well, check this well, out. Page, maybe, page, maybe just smoke page it as he gets and through. It. Well, you can, you can, you could, you could vaporize it. I think that's yes. one way. We actually are thinking that you could put it in a cream, which is how we're getting a lot of transdermal. <laughs> Break it down with water into the blender. What's one cream. More, what's one more cream for me in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if you're not aware of who Forrest is, which you, I don't know, you'd have to be on some other planet. But uh, Forrest was part of uh, the Ultimate Fighter One, correct? Was yes. And uh, which was then transpired into the final episode of you and the Stefan Bonner fight, yeah. which can uh, be said to be one of the big moments in well, UFC. You can say anything you like. Well, that was, was that 2005. Is that when that was? Yeah. So April I remember watching this, and this was was probably the best fight I had ever seen in in, in MMA history. I remember when it was because it was the last day that I would ever have to work a job, so that was big for yeah. me. Uh, pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty. Yeah. No, and and little washing dishes. I think anymore. I think little known fact is that you started out pre-nursing. Do you think that prepared you for that uh, fight? Exactly not at all. Not at no. all. So yeah. well, you there was enough blood in that fight to I mean yeah. that, where that nursing degree some, might some have applied. Yeah. We usually have Turns a, out those are really hard. The nursing I thought it would be easier. Like I thought oh, I'm not smart enough to be a doctor, but surely I could be a nurse, <laughs> right? No. No. I'm not smart enough to be a nurse. But you either. were a cop. Yeah, well much less oh, intelligent. Okay. Than. Quotient's a little lower. And you got to hold the gun. Yeah. 2005, 2013, you've been fighting, I mean, you started seriously 2003, 2002 as a fighter? 2000 and 2000. In 2000. 2000. Y2K. 13 years, 14, 13 years, I guess it's right where we are, of fighting. Um, one of the reasons that we know that we love this TV show is we get to sort of get behind the, the, the glamour that is your life, clearly. Yeah. And uh, talk about some of the nitty gritty. Um, can you talk just between, let's say, the that big famous fight, and now, wh how has the scope of your training changed? Like, what is what what looks different, in how hard you're working, nutrition, anything like that? Yeah. Well, nutritionally, I've changed quite a bit. I think we all do when we, you know, grow up a little bit. Uh, 
First of all, I, I really got into nutrition in high school. And um, my excuse for never having a girlfriend in high school is because every day of the third hour of the day, I would eat a can of tuna fish straight out of the can. Yeah. And I wore work, workout clothes to school every day and smelled yeah. like tuna fish. Track suits. Yeah, yeah. literally every day. Awesome. I would just wear like a different sweatsuit, eat a tuna suit, fish. No, you're 35. Do you remember Weight Gainer 900? Did you have that? I remember, no. I remember wow. like Joe Weider stuff. Yeah, it's like, it Wait, didn't, clear, didn't they have like a 2000 or 2000 too? I want my what? allowance back because that was basically cake batter yeah. with yeah. just like soy protein garbage in it. Like if that guy wasn't already dead, I would sue him. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I have, you no, don't he stole my allowance as a kid. <laughs> he did. And he sold me crap. It did work. He though. sold me He's calling Weeder yeah. out right yeah. now. Yeah. It, it did work. That weekend <coughs> yeah, I, I, we all I could do. That all I could do was put weight on, like mad. I just I mean, killed myself. I went through this phase where I was making a. A chocolate milkshake every night with Wake yeah. 900, two yeah. scoops. So it was like yeah. a 4,000 calorie milkshake. Yeah. It's this big because you oh, can't yeah. drink it. Oh, yeah, it's I flour. My dad. This is your dad. This is my dad. Story. We're dead right off literally yeah. just poured flour. I visit, <laughs> and, 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 and like bad fats. Yeah. I would visit my dad. It would be 11 o'clock at night hot. He'd hear the blender, wake up, come down and be like, oh man, you made me a milkshake. Thanks, bro. And he'd kill it. Yeah. And I'd make myself one again. And he did that for like two weeks straight. Came down and was like, man, this is. He's like, ah, I'm putting all this weight on. And I was like, well, Dad, you're chugging like a 4,500 calorie shake every night. Yeah. And, uh, and you don't feel like that worked for you? Uh, no, it was horrible. It was garbage. I'm still upset about it. And I'm, I'm upset about the whole 90s because I, I was that guy. Like, I, I kept a log, a calorie log, a calorie journal, whatever you, you want really? to call it. 6,000 calories a day. Yeah. And that sounds like, oh, 6,000 calories a day is a lot. But this is the 90s. That's like nine fat, bagels. Fat was bad in the yeah. 90s. <laughs> I didn't eat egg yellows. I didn't eat olive oil. I didn't eat avocados. I didn't eat fat. I ate lean chicken breast, potatoes, and egg whites to get to six. Do you know how much food that is? Yes. All of it. To get yes. 6,000 calories. Yes. All of it. Like, like, I, no plus egg, the, plus no the creatine yellows, shakes. No what do you know? Old school bodybuilder. Like, I was so, yeah. I was so upset. Like, yes. like uh, I was like, oh, I really like avocado, but I can't have the fat. Yeah. I wouldn't eat olives. Yeah. Like on the you go to Subway and I would get Subway like every day. I would no olives. God no. Also make fat. <laughs> Let me just eat this giant dyed bread that's wheat. So so how are some dye in the batter at the last second. So from oh, weight gainer nine hundred to eating clean to you know, what how how are you eating now? Uh not Man, this moment. It's a long, but. yeah, it's a long, this is a long story. I'm actually, I'm, I'm moderately, like, f diet and exercise, it really interests me. But uh, we don't eat anything processed, more or less, other than dark chocolate, which I'm addicted to. Yeah. So, um, no, I eat really, like, I eat fruits, vegetables, lots, organic meats, uh, you know. And you're doing your own hunting thing? That, that were, uh, well... I, I got some friends and I've been yeah. getting meat from them and yeah, I'm, so I try to get as much, you know, wild game as possible. And uh, we got a friend with wild chickens, so. Okay, so. They're not that wild, We're actually. seeing a so shift. In. We, we set up. Um, you and know, I eat a bunch of fat. In our, in our, we can tell your coat is shiny. Yeah. yeah. In the intro, <laughs> we talked about Kobe Bryant injuring himself. He's 35, tears his Achilles, you know, just on a drive shot. Um, <laughs> We're seeing that we know in the athletes we work with that you can buffer a bad diet and bad lifestyle well into your 30s, but then one day you just can't buffer anymore. Is that well, what's happened? Yeah. I think for, for a guy like Kobe Bryant, if you really think about it, it's, it's not. I'm sure he has a nutritionist and whatever. He's perfect. He does everything you know, on and off the court to win. He's actually an amazing, dedicated person. But you know, you're doing this thing. Your body's only going to do it for so long. What, what, what those guys do is amazing. Like, you know, I remember like seeing college football and being like, those guys are moving that fast. That's hot, Nate, oh, yeah. right now. So that a pro game, you're like, that's ridiculous. It's you know, ridiculous. like if you think about trying to do what he does against the people he does, it's only a matter of time before something goes. Well, I, we think a little bit differently. Yeah. We think that. If you think about it, you think people were made to last 110 years. I think people have made the last about 40 years. 
So it's it. And then you got, you're done. You got five more years, done. and then that's it. Boom. That's all you got. <laughs> like for after forty, you're pretty much just a burden on society. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can, damn! That, that I, is turned, the, I turned forty this that year. Is, that is the impression I get when I get to the airport. It, it, after forty, it's that whoosh, like yeah. down, you're really worthless. It's, Everybody's getting you know, a ride to the. Well, to the it's you know. basically a controlled free fall. Yeah, controlled. Right. I got my I got my flying squirrel outfit on. Well, you do have a template kind of for this mentality in your last book, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Right? Well. I mean, you know, we'll eat the old people. It'll work out. Yeah, that's been done. That the experiment's soiling green. It's already been done. Yeah, there you do go. You, um, they were onto something. Do you think that uh, having a daughter who's a year and a half? Wait, where she, are we going with the she, Kobe Bryant? We're she, we'll there. go there. Well, we're oh. gonna get there. We're, yeah. we, we've got it all laid out. <laughs> do you think it does Hold her you. nutrition? Has Should it affected you. your nutrition? Because kids, I know parents who is, is your kid eating what you guys eat? Oh yeah. She eats what you got, that's it? Exactly what Mass we Mass quantities eat. of banana, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, with, with maybe an excessive amount of banana. But, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, as far as we don't feed her anything genetically modified, whereas anything or, or anything, everything she eats is organic. Whereas, like, you know, avocados, any avocados, bananas, anything that's got a shell that you don't eat, yeah. I'll eat, you know, sprayed, filled with bug juice, whatever. But no, my daughter's only had like a couple things that weren't like perfect. Oh. Yeah. So a lot of people get, you know, they have a kid. And it gets harder. And then, yeah. and like, well, we got these Cheerios. And I, I really have a problem with this. You have a problem with Cheerios? I yeah. wouldn't eat them. You never had Cheerios? You never had Cheerios? Problem. Cheerios. Problem I wouldn't eat them. Of course, he's got a problem with Cheerios. Uh, doesn't that upset you? Because I yeah. know like these moms <laughs> and they're eating like this salad and their kid's eating a hamburger from like hamburger place, you know? And they're eating like a healthy salad with some berries and some I'm, nuts. Let me ask like, you a serious yeah, question. You make your kid eat that too. How many boxes of cereal did you eat by the time you graduated from high school? A ton of Raisin Bran. I don't, actually, you know, I was into, oh, again, I got into health early. You stopped eating so, cereal that early? Like, you didn't I, stop eating cereal until I, you were like, I was, I, I was eating uh, canisters too, no, of oatmeal. Like literally like this much oatmeal, but no butter, mind you. This oh, much of it, and then I would just put cinnamon and sugar on it, cause sugar wasn't as bad as fat. No, I get you. And I had to have something. So just the, the oatmeal. You were off the. So okay, so you, your daughter's in there. The reason we mentioned this nutrition piece, position piece, mechanics is that by the time you're 35, you're a really good fighter. Like you know how to get ready for a fight. You know how to fight people. Your skills are really good. but That's what I keep telling people. Yes. We're, we're seeing that that's when You're the, a lethal weapon. the breakdown starts to happen a little bit right. in the, the body. We're starting to see kids in their 30s to 40s who are still dominating people because by the time you're actually a good fighter or a good cyclist or a good runner, you're like actually not a race. Yeah, your, your peak years have passed. You know, the male body peaks at 33, they say. So is it, is it your, is a guy like Randy Couture, is he just a freak? He's a freak, yeah. And so he, we shouldn't count him or do you think there's things we can do to emulate well, nutrition? Well, no, there, there's definitely things we can do to kind of follow his example. But again, you know, he's the bell curve, whatever, he's over here, you know, don't, he's not, you Let's know, not count he's, him. He's the outlier. No, no, oh. yeah, that book, Outliers. Let's yeah, yeah, count yeah. him. Yeah. Let's oh, count him. Book. Let's yeah. see what he did. But let's also take, uh, to be realistic about his genetic capabilities and what the cards he was dealt versus what we are and what you can't, there's no steroids, there's no workout. Nothing turns uh, a chihuahua into a pit bull. And that's what I try I've to tried. explain to Ooh, people. I've tried. You know, Wait, you can't we, get. Can we pull up a picture of Wendy the Whippet? Somebody, just Google that. We'll pull that up. Is that they've they've bred something? Genetic. They, they they see where's they, that they've, technology? They've removed the miles. Oh, strategy. that's your whip. That's your like little. That's, that's your little. Demon. I want to get LeBron oh, James you, you DNA know. injected into me. Is that possible? <laughs> yeah. Like, can well, I borrow we can do that. blood we can do that LeBron? By, we can do that by four o'clock. I get you. I get yeah. you, toe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a toe. I get a toe. I get a toe. I get a toe. So here you are. Still competing. You just had a fight not too long ago, right? Last July was big. Last big fight. Yeah, yeah. So I was supposed to fight in December, and I misplaced my knee. It happens. But again, like we were talking about, that wasn't. I've never had a knee, any f foot problem. Any, that was a catastrophic incident. You know, one minute my knee was fine, and then one minute through, you know, training, it was destroyed. 
The same thing actually happened originally with my shoulder. You know, I'm fine. Fellow slams me on the ground, not fine. You know, it wasn't like it wasn't like I was doing a bad habit. Like I was throwing yeah. my jab a certain way, and I was like, oh, that really hurts. You we know? we divide sort of the 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 all the injuries sort of into just a couple categories. One is catastrophe and yeah. clearly fighting. Wendy the whippet. Wendy the whippet. This is the most jacked whippet. We'll put this up. This this whippet weighs about 300 pounds. <laughs> And could outrun your pit bull yeah. and bench your. Does it, she looked. She's bu that that whippet is buffered in my pit bull. Does who, it you know, uh, trains? <laughs> it, it doesn't have the thing, the the statin or they whatever. They mile. They pulled the mile statin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen that in bulls and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Hamsters can you too. do that to me? Can Possibly. you take the thing out of the restricted muscle well, growth? I've heard. China's playing around with this. How did you? Uh, <laughs> right. How? So okay. Your nutrition's cleaned up a lot because yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, here's the, I'm still upset because I've eaten healthy my whole life, but healthy changed on me. Oh, oh. sons of bitches! That's yeah. fair enough. Fair you enough. Like I, I, I knew like oh, I eat this, you know, and, and and you know, so now it's changed. Now and it, we see that um, I think even in like. Pavel, in one of his early books, was talking about the 100 kettlebell snatch test. Yeah. And he had a, a like a BJJ guy do Pavel, it. Pavel Tazov, whatever. Yeah, yeah, right, Pavel. Russian kettlebell guy. And uh, Pavel, sorry. Pavel. And uh, so this BJ, this this fighter guy did the 100 kettlebell snatch test and said it was like the hardest thing he'd ever done. So it killed him. Now, like we expect of all our athletes to crush that guy. It's time. It's because the, the work capacity model is out is of the like bag. Four like, minutes? Yeah, it, yeah, everyone works hard now. Yeah. So if everyone's fitter, and everyone is nutri I mean, we see that the top athletes are really, it's, it's 1% here, it's a couple percent here, I sleep. You know, we were talking about traveling. One of our friends doesn't sleep a lot. He sleeps irregularly, he keeps yeah. weird hours. You were talking about your sleep. We talked about, how do you manage your sleep? How much sleep at night do you get? You know, I don't need, uh, seven, seven and a half to eight hours. Do you go to bed at the same time? I go to bed at approximately the same time every night. Wake up at the same time? I mean, if I do the math, I unless, guess you do. Yeah, right. I mean, seven unless, hours is seven unless hours. Unless my so. daughter decides that she's going to get up a little earlier. But do, for do, the most part, I sleep the same hours every day. How is having a child, uh, a one-year-old, under one, and training for a fight, how that, how that go for you? Well, you just, well, I slept in the other room, <laughs> actually. And I had gotten a tent, too, so I'd already slept in the other room, you know? So I, it, for me, it was fine. So I it's just, it's I really from, from reading your book, I am... Um, would play this scenario in my head. Have you ever seen the movie Change Up? Where the guy's sitting in bed and he's, and he's oh, he, he yeah, and his buddy switched switch. and, yeah, and yeah. She, they, the baby gets up in the middle of the night and he says, you're the mommy, you yeah. go get the baby. And she basically tells him, you get the F out of bed yeah. or I will knife you. Yeah, yeah. You know, or that's I will cut much, you. That's that, pretty much the way it goes. Yeah, that's what but I thought. Because Brian, Brian's a pretty good athlete, but I can't wait to see him do it with a kid. Right. The, the no? thing like, is... Yeah is that me and my wife derive our income from me fighting. Yes. It's our income. It's not my money. It's our money. Absolutely. She also wants us to get our money, which comes from fighting, which is the best thing about being a professional athlete is working out is my priority. It gets to be my priority over everything else in life. Your child, your wife. You're like, ah, well, and it, so it becomes, you know, <clears throat> early on, my wife got on the team, you know, and realized I can't train if I don't, have con you know continuous sleep like I, I don't if I wake up a couple times during the night I'm not so good the next day or the next couple days even you know so it wasn't a problem for me I had an awesome wife that's pretty cool you got I'm not looking, I, I don't know where my wife is but she's exercising she, the back she is and uh, uh, not hearing this. I'm gonna start talking about <laughs> hey, I've, I've I get paid to stretch I'm the, the stretchy guy what's going on well, I've, essentially, I've never I mean, essentially, woken up. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so you, that is true about this. Because we talk to a lot of professional athletes who have multiple kids, and how do you manage that, and the training, and being away, and, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's complex. It is. Do you have a full-time coach? As? I have. Parentheses. Yeah, S. I have like four of them. Yes. And I, I go through them. I get different ones. I'm I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a floozy when it comes to coaches. Well, look, just whore has three things. zeros whore. in it. Yeah. Whore. Do, whore. Is it because you? Uh, those of you guys who don't fight um, <coughs> or aren't familiar with some of the fighting, it is so complex to ha put a skill set together that takedowns, grappling, fighting, punching, striking, kicking, 
is that because strength and conditioning, do you have to have a person that for all of those things? You I mean to to build a complete I, kill set? I almost think you have kill set. Here, here's what Whoa. here's what people have have uh, in the sport have kind of gravitate gravitated towards. You have a person for every skill set, and then you have a head trainer. Yeah. You know, so you got like four guys, and then a guy over him. You know, because because my the guy that does my strength. <laughs> He's really concerned about me being strong and athletic, but he doesn't realize that me being strong and athletic is not as important as the next workout tomorrow morning where I actually use the strength and athleticism he's given me. So a lot of that too is I do my heaviest lifting after a fight. After a fight, I don't rest, I, I immediately start lifting heavy. And that's when I try and build my strength because the last month, six weeks before a fight, you're doing a lot of training, a high volume of skill work, just training, you know, sparring, etc. And you know, you're you're cutting your weight down, your calories are depleted, so you're not going to get strong. It's about strength retention, you know. Yeah. You want to keep the strength that you got the first month, you know. So you've got to, you know, it gets, you know, like any workout, you're going to prioritize and you're going to segment. And yeah, this is some, a fairly elaborate process. Some, in the fact yeah, that you have one guy who actually looks at the entire scope of well, things, like how much jiu-jitsu you that did, that guy how much... that looks at everything is kind of an idiot. His name is Forrest, and okay. I don't know that he's yeah. very good. <laughs> oh. I think maybe Ooh. I should sometimes outsource it, but I'm too... Well, have, seen, well here's yeah. controlling. I don't yeah. trust anybody yeah. you really just, I, I don't blame you. You just really hit on a, a piece, I think, that uh, the modern strength and conditioning coach, particularly at the university level or training other athletes, Forget all the times. Well, my strength and conditioning coach told me the best thing, the most important thing that he'll do is not hurt me, not injure me for practice. Because, you know, you've seen a lot of guys busted up in the weight room that have bad practices because they tweak themselves in the weight room, you know? Well, I would say that safety in the weight room is commensurate with performance in the, in the, the gym. But you, I think that's, I mean, if you're getting injured in the gym, there's big error there. This is, the, this is the safest place on the planet. The real question is controlled environment. It's a right. controlled where's laboratory. Opposed, where as opposed to sparring. But how do you manage so how many how many strength and conditioning sessions a week do you do? Let's say not in that six weeks before. I mean, because you clearly the mistake that people make is that they, they love being strong but they can't go do their sport. You know, I, right? even with running. Yeah. I do uh, yeah. I do about six, but they're very varied. Some of them are you know, some of them might just be uh, 15 minutes of auto sprint. Some yeah. of them might just be a sprint. Some yeah. of them might be just a carry. And then, and then uh, you know, Sunday is my, my heavy lift day, heavy front squats, heavy trap bar deadlift. It should be, it used to be a little different. It used to be heavy back squats, heavy deadlift, and heavy cleans. But now, do you know, cleans with a drop, deadlift with a trap bar now, and front squats. You know, a little, little safer, a little less weight. And then, you know, you can do pull ups and push ups. I would say, you know, put those in twice after, just after workout. And I, something else, I like to do my strength uh, as I get closer to the fight after my workout. Because for me, it's about priority. It's not as, me lifting weights yeah. is not as critical well, this as, is... as the, having the energy when I'm actually on the mat or in the gym with people trying to hurt me. You know, and, and they're my friends, but they're trying to hurt me. We do, we hurt each other, you know? And uh, so, it, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough, like, where do you balance? And then you have to make the lifts simpler because you're already kind of neurologically stressed, yeah. right? You've yeah. already worked out a couple, two, three hours, so you don't want anything too complicated that you can injure yourself with. Is this, oh, the, is this the Forrest Griffin model or is this general thinking consensus no thing? no this is just me and and this is what i've found through years uh i actually at one point in 2006 i got really strong and really fast i was lifting three times a week doing sprints twice a week and i got strong and fast and started getting close to my uh pre-fight numbers as far as weight i was able to move you know and uh i wasn't very good at practice I wasn't very, like, I you wasn't, cooked. yeah, well, yeah. I just, I didn't find that, like, I was a little, you know, I was a very, uh, you know, because well, I was. I mean, that's kind of, the, I mean, that's the exact model we use, you know, with the, with the endurance athletes is, like, we set the precedence of what exactly has to prioritize, and it's usually the, the, the sport-specific sport. stuff. Sets precedence early in the day, 
then later in the day, if you're hitting two, it's, hey, then you go deal with the strength and conditioning stuff. You train, you said, <clears throat> training, not chit-chatting, four hours a day. Uh, maybe even a little less. Not eight? <laughs> is, that, is that four hour blocks, is that two blocks? No, yeah, it's two two hour blocks, yeah. Do you, uh, so two two hour blocks, Different gyms, different skills. Yeah. Do how? Uh, what's what's the nutrition look like? How how do you keep yourself? Because one of the things that I think people don't understand about MMA is this weight component, well, which is a whole different beast. I oh, actually yeah. have a different problem than you would think. Uh, huh. My problem is eating during the day, and also I take excessive amounts of caffeine in before three o'clock. So I'm excessive. working out. Define let's, what, dis, let's define uh, that. Eight, eight, we, we, we don't eight, think that's possible. 800 milligrams? Yeah. 800 milligrams. No, we're, we're not of the mindset that there is excessive. There's, that's only four cups of coffee, though, right? Venti's? Uh, it's a ton of espresso shots. Or define coffee. a ton. Many. many what, many. what is the forced grip? I try and cut shot. it off at a. I mean, I, I like a six shot Americano. Start, start wow. the day off. It's aggressive. It's, I mean, it's a good time. You, you were saying earlier, you don't like to turn the engine off? Do you think, <laughs> do you think that in lieu of saying six shots, is that like jump-starting that thing? Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a gradual addiction. You have to titrate you, up to that. Do you yeah. think that could have an effect on the tissue itself in the body? It, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, like, I don't know. it's like... Just tossing it out there. You know, is... All right, so let me get back. So I don't eat enough throughout the day. Yeah. You know, I don't, I would like to eat a little more, but I have some, you know, I don't like to train on a full stomach. I really don't. So I just eat little meals throughout the day, but I do eat like every three or so hours. Before and after every workout, I eat something. Whole foods or supplements? Yeah. Sometimes like supplements, shakes, but a lot of eggs. I eat a lot of raw eggs, which is really smart. Um, you know. You got your black belt under Robert Drysdale, right? I did. Uh, we actually, ironically, used Drysdale uh, Jiu Jitsu as a tester for 3Fuel. So they're using what? Uh, 3Fuel, a product that we create, that yeah. I've created, that uh, they actually use, they've been using, which is. We keep hearing that all the best athletes in the world are really saying, hey, eat food, eat whole oh, foods yeah. whenever you oh, can. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Supplement Absolutely. when you can't eat whole foods or yeah. it's not going to work for When you need to. Yeah. So what happens then, have a hard time getting enough calories in the day for these two big, I mean, you're not a tiny dancer. You're putting out some energy. Yeah. So then what, what's the evening look like? Are you like compressing Ooh. calories in there? Is it on? Yeah. And it's an unintentional warrior diet. Uh, it, I, Isn't that Erish's diet, the warrior diet? Didn't, wasn't Erish into that big time? No, no. no? Maybe. But Erish is our, is our publisher. Is our yeah, publisher. But these things don't happen on purpose. The trouble is it's hot. I don't like to eat when it's hot. I'm moving around all day. I'm drinking coffee, hot coffee in the sun. I like that. And then, you know, so I'm getting in some nutrients. I'm taking, I eat like fruit and protein. You know, I'm taking in some nutrients. But then when I come home, about two hours after I get home, I eat like a meal when I get home. But then like two hours after that, I really get hungry. And I eat a giant meal. You know, but it's like, it's like, you know, meat and, and vegetables of every kind and thrown in a big salad bar. Or uh, whatever my wife's cooking. And my wife, see, this is another thing. She cooks really healthy, good food. So it's not that hard, you know, for me. Like the only That's thing a bonus. I, yeah, the only thing I really eat bad is uh, uh, this one barbecue sauce. But it's the least poison <laughs> of the poison. You said you, you know? put hot sauce on everything? Hot sauce or some barbecue sauce. Do you hear that? Yeah. So my daughters and I are addicted to sauce. We love sauce. I'm a sauce guy. Well, you know, hot sauce. I'll tell you why we're all addicted to sauce. Because we eat really plain foods all day. Yeah. <laughs> we're eating like, yeah. you know, you're eating vegetable. Like yeah. maybe it was Do like. You I can agree with that. Just a spoonful of sriracha. Have you ever done that? Or spoon sriracha in the avocado. I got that from you. Yeah. Uh, you can up, up, a, you can take yeah, fat yeah, yeah, and yeah. hot sauce and just mix it together. Even my daughters have started doing that. You know, George is like, hey, Dad, Let me tell you something. bring out the Franks. I've started on Franks so we can up it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I hit the sriracha, but I do not, do not hit it in my mid-meal before my second workout. I, yeah. Or that 
the hot sauce and the coffee creates the worst, and I don't get heartburn. <laughs> yeah. But you drink a cup of coffee and eat some food with Cu hot sauce. Or on six it. cups of right, coffee. Right but, before yeah, one cup of coffee. a workout that's six like, <laughs> six, you know, exhausting, then it's just the burn is just phenomenal. How much weight do you sort of have to manage between who you are right now and sort of like fighting weight? All right, I'm naturally a 230 pound guy. If I'm working out and I work, I'm usually about 230. So if I train hard, like I'm prepping for a fight, but I'm I, skinny. I get down are. to about 224, 32. I know just, you know, from trial and error, when I walk in the cage at night after the weight cut, the next day, I'm going to be 223. So the last month of training, I want to be about 223 because that's, that's the fight weight. I've, I've walked around at 235, and then when you get in the cage and you're 220, you're like, oh, I don't feel like I usually feel. So, and then I just cut most from the 223 in like three days to the 205, and then I put it right back on with a minimum of, uh, you know. So with the, no, the rest of us non-fighters. You wait 205 for yeah, the fight. Yeah, he fights at 205. You fight and win. For the weigh-in. Right. Yeah. And then there's about 30 hours lag time. Yeah which I immediately rehydrate, rebulk, and I'm about 220. So what, for regular people out there who don't ever go through anything like that, what, what, is, what does that feel like when you're going from a 230 pound guy down to 223 that you feel good at, yeah. then cutting down to 205? It's not that bad. Yeah. It's not that bad. It's, Just, for me, it's like two days without, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know how, I still eat kind of regular through the day for the last week, and then I just, after my last workout, when you were like, okay, big dinner, no dinner at all. And, uh, you know, it's... Yeah, a, and that's... It's not, not no carbs after six, it's no, no dinner after no six. No dinner, yeah. For the, yeah, yeah. For the next day weigh-in? Yeah. Just, just for, like, two days. And that was, like, that's, like, the Tour de France cyclist guys' way of cutting, too. I mean, it's they're just, bad. like, take a sleeping pill, hit the fucking sack, and and That's wake actually up. another thing I do. The night before weigh-ins, I, after my last workout, that's when the water's done is, you know, no more water. So I'll drink water, like distilled water throughout the day, and then the last, like, I save that much water after the workout, take a sleeping pill, wake up. And so it's, it's a mild, if, it's a very short period. If we cut you in summer. half and count the rings, are we gonna see all of those cutting, so is it hard? Does it feel like it's hard on you to be able to go up and down? No big deal, because you're human. It was, but it's gotten easier, and I, I figured it out. You know? Yeah, it's are not you that hard anymore. Are you hard to be around to? Not really. Coffee no. intake stays the same then, I assume. Uh, I, I reduced that a little bit. Just five and a half shots. Yeah, right? But, uh, so I eat pretty good, and then every night I finish the night with a thousand calories of dark chocolate and raw almonds. Every night. And I don't know why what I do you, never lean up. Essentially, it's just kind of Whether you need loading. it or not. <laughs> yeah. It's habit. It, it, Force it habit. It's not even your fault. It's a habit. Sometimes, like, like you know how you have to like something to look forward to, and, and I don't need anything like cake, ice cream, nothing like that. Whole milk so, yogurt. My. Uh, and cashew butter. Yeah. yeah well, or I don't really butter. eat any butters, but I, don't, I just. Aaron likes the butters. The dark chocolate, and I'll just toss three fuel into it. I just the dark chocolate. I like the act of eating too, not chocolate. <laughs> like to 1,200 calories, and I do this every night. I, I brought nuts and chocolate for last night. Wow! Because I don't want to go with that. But you, but you, you, you this clearly is a, this is a process. You come up with a model of like wow. if it's working, don't you know? Yeah, it's like you know, I gotta have something. But we see a lot of athletes something. back load in the middle of the night. In fact, there's actually an interesting article that came up or uh, out of that ancestral health symposium yeah. uh, that looked at kind of the classic sleep cycles. Maybe it's not eight hours contiguous. Now it's maybe four, four hours, four. wake I up, just saw four this. hours, right? You saw that too. Because I, 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 I always wake up four hours and I'm like, I'm hungry and I, I get up and have don't. a snack. I don't. Yeah. Hey, you're 230 pounds, bro. <laughs> it's not my the fault. Fuck? <laughs> I, just, I just woke up and I was like this. It's not yeah. my fault. Look. I don't wake up in the middle of the night hungry at 195, but at 230, I would well, assume even, I would. Even like I mean, the fuck. bodybuilders, let's extreme, be serious. You remember they would yeah. set the alarm and get up and eat a chicken, up, eat, and then go back yeah. to sleep. Bodybuilders used to do that. Yeah. Julia, yeah. you should do thermocarb <laughs> right before you go to bed. That's a good idea. Boom, boom, boom. Ju or because Julia had always calories and nuts or a thousand chocolate. calories of dark chocolate. Dude, I would be almost. I could win puffy like that. Win puffy. <laughs> Because Juliet, Christy Phillips, I, uh, I'll make. Sometimes I've even made like toast, <coughs> some gluten-free bread, and put some nut butter. And Juliet's like, I come back to bed. She's like, you smell like peanut butter toast. And I'm like, of course, it's two in the morning. I had to have peanut butter toast. 
I say, well, if you just get that out of the way right before bed, then just accept, just acquiesce to the nature of your beast, then you won't want I mean, yeah. I'm good. trying to think, exercising four hours a day, good. I don't do that. I think that's the problem. Yeah. I'd be well, 270 pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, uh, and I'm going to find out now with this, with this time off that I, that I could get in some trouble. Do you, yeah. you said you train heavy right after. How many days, how long off from a fight does it take? Do you, do, you, do you take it or do you go to the gym the next day, two days later? How do you, how do you do recover something. from that big effort? I, mean, I do something. I'll do like yoga, Pilates. It depends, you know. If I'm not really banged up, I'll definitely do something. And, and, and again, that's when I like to, like within the week of the fight, I like to start the heavy lifting and concentrate, like almost prioritize strength, at, you know, strength and explosiveness because I'm not an explosive person. And I have to be made to do like explosive movements. I don't like them. But so for you are that next a constant month, mover, though. Yeah. Yeah. But but there's no explosiveness. Wait, to I'm me. confused. During the week of the fight, like you'll start putting in some heavy stuff in. No, no, no. The, oh, right the after, after, immediately after, after the fight. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, this is I would, Brian's model is would, yeah. big effort. We we try to have our athletes think, hey, look, you can't just. Red right line, before red line. the fight, speed, 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 speed. Yeah. Everything's quick. Up, uh, up. Uh, the second. I'd the second you're not fast on a rep, you're done. The second you start to hit that wall at five, six, seven reps where, where this takes longer than this, you're done. And that's my rule with any, any weight. The second, you know. Training quality in, in the r rolling, in the striking, same thing? If you start to, you start to get sloppy and slow, are you done? Just tighter. I, well, the last week, I'd do a warm up and then I'd do a 25 minute go. Real hard, where I hit mitts, Get on the ground. I'll work a position. You know, I got a guy going 70% on me. Maybe just hold me down. Work in a specific position. Back to the mitts. Work something that's, that I think might occur. Positions that I think are going to occur in the fight. One 25-minute go. Done. The week, the week before. Yeah. Leading up to it. We were talking earlier that um, one of our all-American swimmers, week before big meet, like really big meet taper. She, her coach would have her come out of the pool and not do these pool workouts. Yeah. And she'd freak out because she'd lose her touch. And you had a really good analogy that you were saying, hey, keep the car idling. Don't turn Never the car turn off. Never turn it off. You know, it's hard to turn it on. You don't want a cold start and then go, right? So you keep it, you know, you just don't rev it. You just keep it idling. Man. Old, old saying, go into the ring cold, come out cold. How do you warm up for a fight? Oh, I do. I have probably an excessive warm up, and that might be a little. And, and the thing about warming up for something you've cut weight for is something about glycogen and some shit like that that I really didn't understand. But it made sense when the smart guy explained it to me. <laughs> is that you've already depleted a lot of your vital energy stores, etc. In that 15 to 25 minutes, you are not really going to start like burning a lot of fat, you know. So you still need all those sugars and all that stored energy, which when you dieted the last week, Sucked it you out. killed a lot of that. So don't warm up too much. But with that said, I warm up a lot. <laughs> like I go in there wet. Like I, like, but with that said, like a sweater I say wet. screw it and I just warm and, up and a ton. I just, I just pound water. So every time I go in there, I've got to pee. I've got to pee every time. Is that, is that how you try to like your... No, it's not intentional. <coughs> but, but the thing is, it's amazing. No matter how bad you have to pee, when somebody starts trying to hit you in the face... And you don't have to pee anymore. People, ...you forget that you had to pee. Just goes right away. I would imagine. Away. Yeah, I would imagine. That Disneyland would last week, Georgia, we're going to the Hollywood House of Terror, the free fall. Right. Georgia's in line. She's like, you know, I've, I've got to pee really bad right now. I'm like, we're yeah. about to go on the ride. Should you pull a star out like, of it? I know. And she's like, no, no, I got to go on the. You don't think that that's what it is? You think it's actually the water? It's not that you're a little bit Hollywood House of Terror. I didn't think so. I, I, well, I just sit in the locker room pounding water because as I'm, you know, sweating, I say, oh man, I need all this hydration. And I just keep pounding. Electrolytes? Do you, do you use an electrolyte supplement? Do you just drink water? I do. I do all kinds of different electrolytes type stuff. Yeah. Which ones? Um, well, I actually was using that volume maze by BSN. So, and I've used I've used a bunch of different stuff. But some I'm, some I'm, kind of you're looking at electrolytes, yeah, yeah, quality yeah, water, not just yeah. water. So when you're saying you're pounding water, you're not just pounding yeah like distilled water. No, yeah, like I pounded distilled water, 
before to make the weight to get all the sodium, potassium, and other electrolytes out of my system because they make you retain water. Yeah. And so I've killed all those. I don't have any of those. So as soon as I, you know, cross the. You ever wake up in the middle of the night with a hamstring cramp? Not usually. No. I stay yeah. pretty hydrated. Huh. I'm a hydration machine. Wow. How much water do you think you drink a day? Can you point out? Over two gallons. Oh. And I drink Does this some include coffee? No. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> coffee being a diuretic. So I drink two gallons of water. Plus, for every, like, say, 20 ounces of coffee I drink, I drink 20 ounces of water to offset the dehydration. So I'm drinking well over the two gallons of water. And I seriously have to pee right Forrest now. has a plan. So I'm one, telling of, you. one of our athletes uh, who's a national medalist, uh, she's a coach here, national medalist Olympic lifting, just went to your course this weekend. Yes. And she started drinking water. And she's like, I feel a little sloshy, but man, I sort of feel better all the time. We just think it's one of the basic errors that people are making. Is yeah. That they are. It, it, and it's yeah. almost like, it's like one of those... You know, that's you want somebody that's you want somebody to come to you that's a little dehydrated just because, oh my God, it's like the simplest fix. So they're like, you're a genius. Sure, I'm a genius. And it was like, yeah, we function better off water. That's the focus, <laughs> of, our, that's the focus <laughs> of our nutrition lecture. We've we've had we've even had athletes show up at our gym not firing on the deadlift, and I'll have them suck on a like an electrolyte tab. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. hey, go hit that again, and like electrolytes blown out, dehydrated, boom, yeah. they just they up upregulate yeah. immediately. Yeah. Well, it's pretty amazing. It, it, I mean, even at three percent dehydration, ten percent change. Man, I was just—I might have been in your book. I was just reading that actually. You know about the, the yeah. gradual amounts of. No, it was I was on a, a link from a website. The you know what we're seeing is not only if we look at cardiac output, if you're just down a little bit, you know your plasma volume drops and yeah. your heart actually doesn't even contract as hard. That's that Frank Starling mechanism where blood pours back in. And your total volume decreases, so you become merged and too. then you might have a heart attack. Well, there's, I mean, who cares about heart attacks? <laughs> right, right. right I'm but not. you might not perform well That's on right. your way to that heart attack. That's right. More importantly, you should not fight scared. What, uh, here you are. What aspects of your training now? What's changed? What are you doing in the next year to like think about fighting at 36? Think about fighting at 37? Because you could be, you are the next Randy Couture, let's be honest. I mean, you're going to be like 90 Let's, and still fighting. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. I, uh, you know, I've just, I've just taken a lot more focus on taking care of the body as far as, you know, stuff you do, neur neurological stuff, movement errors, you know, trying to fix your day-to-day -day things that you do. Well, I have walk funny. I, here's the thing. A guy like Randy, too, naturally, he's relatively graceful. Yeah. When I sit, when I move, I clunk into things. I smash every step. Every, my wife's like, why are you stomping? I'm like, I just walk like that. I'm not stomping. You know, everything is maximum impact for me. You know, so I've tried to just change some basic patterns, you know. Don't smash. Heel to toe, outside of the foot, easy, you know. Like you're, like you're, you know, like you're making an entry, you know. Heel to toe, outside of the foot, you know. Lower your weight a little. Just, just um, trying to, you know, take life, uh, the, the, all of it, and be a little more cognizant of my posture, what I'm doing, and then uh, you know, I, you, I've always been a good warm up, cool down. I don't stretch cold or anything crazy. How long do you cool down after a, a good session? Uh, I'll do like a, I'll jump rope for maybe like ten minutes, and then I'll do a stretch, like a static stretch after. Usually after, I'll do, I'll stretch something, either upper or lower, after every workout. But as part yeah. of the cool down. Yes. But I'm totally confused on stretching. But I do a lot of like mobility, like movement stuff to, to you, warm you're up. Working your way never through, you're working cold. your way through yeah. the book. So you, yeah, you'll, so be, you'll come, be fairly clear uh, at the end of it. Which, which okay. chapter have you smoked so far? Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not, I'm like on page 40, oh, right? right? I just you got, even got that. That's so, fine. Yeah. That's fine. So you, you no, also have a book, tell me, a second book. You have two books. And so you've got a second book. But there's nothing about about no. mobility or stretch. But, but and, and let's be honest, you're actually a New York Times yeah. bestseller. Nine yeah. weeks on the bestseller list. Yeah, sure. And the name of this book, the second book? Uh, be ready when the shit goes down. Self. So have some toilet paper, the, I think is what that means. A, a guide to the apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. So no, no. And but typically, I, I don't fighters are sponsored by... Lots of you know nutrition companies, which or, you or are, beer yeah. companies. or beer companies, or condom companies, or uh, and you happen to be sponsored by a silencer company as well. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
It's I fairly like interesting. For me. Which is nice. Yeah, and I got a bunch of free silencers and guns out of it, which is always cool. Yeah, but but, uh, protein powder and silencers. I mean, you can, like, you, you can, can never feed, have enough. Feed your daughters with that. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Excellent. Um, so tell me, this, 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 uh, the cooling down, warming up thing. That's why I came. What, what, what should I have been doing all these years? Well, I've obviously, well, you should have thrown everything out. <laughs> okay. And, and just uh, yeah, baby, take any bat, signs whatever. that anybody throws at you and just throw that out well, and do what you feel is best. We, we think that there's a real misconception about sort of taking care of tissues. Really, what we're saying is how do you know if you have a good, you know, how much work do you need to do to keep you from getting stiff yeah. and pulling on tissues that are designed to be loaded for thousands of reps isn't necessarily the way. Right. We work on stiffness, but also we start asking the question, why can't you, do you have full range of motion? Can you do everything that a human being should be able to do, yes or no? So yeah. if you can't put your arm all the way up over your head, it's not stretching, it's being able to put your arm up over your head. Yeah. And that's the key, it's hard to see that. Our model is it's hard to see that when you're fighting. It's easy to see that when I force you into sort of very formal movements of strength and conditioning. Well, and let's be honest. I mean, at 24, 25, you know, if you're moving fairly well. And, and you're world you, champion. And you're world champion or, you know, you, wh at whatever you're doing, um, a lot, and you're not doing any of this stuff, why would it even matter? So you're starting well, some habits right. early on, and then 10 years down the road, here we are where. And we, we've really seen a, a large shift. We move away from genetic prowess into genetic potential, because our, our model is how do you take the best athlete in the world and improve their function? Okay, I, I, I read this on, on the road. <laughs> These aren't the best athletes in the world. How do I, to screw the best athlete in the world, how do I take me and get, get how do I get the best out of me, you know? Well, I could care less about yeah. Kobe Bryant. He's awesome, he's an amazing athlete. <laughs> I will never be anything like him. But, but the, the real model- As he will never be. Like Forrest Griffin. <laughs> if he's lucky. <laughs> but the, our question is, are how many injuries are preventable? Like yeah. every once in a while, someone's gonna roll into your leg. You can't help it, right? Yeah. That's gonna happen. Every once in a while, you're gonna get knee cancer. That's gonna happen. Every other mechanical problem, like his, you know, I just wrote an article like the, with Men's Health this about- every five seconds? Well, it just means you're a little tight neurologically, but that's fixable too, <laughs> right? But the, the issue is, you know, Kobe tears his Achilles, how could that have been prevented? Absolutely, it could have been prevented. Yes. You know, is he inflamed? Is it was diet? What was nutrition? Is how stiff is his? Does he have full range of motion in his do, ankles? Do they make him play eighty games a year and travel? That's, and that's what, stay but, in hotel rooms. Of course. And get shitty yes. Sleep. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. All yeah, of that's, it. That's, that's all the of point. It. I, I, I uh, the rehab place so, I go to. They work with a bunch of baseball players, and baseball seems like the gnarliest sport, easiest sport ever. But these guys are so beat up, like they're doing like basically their workouts are borderline just therapy, like just like straight, you know, real, because what well, A-Rod blows out his hip. Right? They, they play 180, 160 games a year. They travel. They're on the road. They got season. They got to work out on travel days. Yeah. They got to play. Like they'll play travel. Uh, my buddy had uh, shin uh, fractures in his shins just from standing and running around the outfield because they're not like real soft, you know, at the end of the year. Like, it's, it's a ridiculous sport, so you can't, like, so that's why the NFL did not is have, like, hey. He did not have fractures from standing as a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. He had fractures because his diet sucked, his sleep sucked, he was compromised on travel, all of the things that would let him be in a good position or mechanics or don't tissues. Suck. I mean, they're eating like good food. They got like but a guy. All we have to do is one, a few them. bad nights sleep. One bad night's sleep, your immune compromised thirty percent. Yeah. Right. You're glucose intolerant for. I mean, your your fasting blood glucose is up. You look pre-diabetic for twenty four hours. Well, that, well that's and, the nature of the. And if we go back and take a look, most sports and well, so that's even for me. Absolutely. That's, that's what we're saying. So I'll have to travel in the middle of, middle of a camp to make some money doing an appearance or something. So you got to go. And so, you got to sleep in a strange place, and you got to be on a different time zone. Completely and agree. So our, one of our friends... It, it is what it is. We're going to have him on the show here. He's the strength conditioning coach for the San Jose Sharks. Yeah. He doesn't get those guys very much because they have to play, and they have all these other things and lives, right? So how does he fit that in? Yeah. You know, and then at the same time, those guys travel into every time zone. So they travel so, more than any other person, any other team travels, and it wrecks them. It wrecks their sleep. It wrecks that's their... another thing about... The Randy Couture, no effect on him. 
Like, if, if he's in a car for more than 10 minutes, he's just asleep. And when he wakes up, he feels fine. He feels great. He's like, yeah, let's do that. But this is kind of relaying back kind of to like, what it is we're talking about. Is it like, how can you adapt to this environment that you're now put in, this stress of we, know, being and, a, and, and you're, a that's fighter? That's right. Getting on the road, being in a training camp, having to go do an appearance. Thing, you ever what, notice, like, when they fight in Dubai or Japan or something, the fights aren't as good? Well, so they're fighting, they're, yeah. you know, they're different well, yeah. times. Uh, they, 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 yeah. they were on a plane breathing thin air hours, for 17, yeah. 20 hours. Yeah. No, I, I agree. But, I mean, if we take a look at something like Kobe, and it's like, okay, so here's Kobe you know and here's do? 20 other. He should be breathing oxygen on the plane when he travels every other day. Well, there you, well, Stanford, you just solved Stanford it. Stanford sleep, people say it takes an, a full day for every hour of, tr of travel. And if we saw, like, for example, in CrossFit World, we saw Sam Briggs fly in from the UK, right, per try to perform. There's no mm -hmm. way she can perform. No, no. She's crippled. And so, but the yeah. baseball players, you don't have three days to go. So Kobe has to travel. So if we know that his tissues are inflamed, then we have to keep an eye on it. Then we have to maximize the other well, pieces. Well, the Spurs the are stiffest. catching crap for not traveling, guys. Every, you know, trying yeah. to give the guys a day off every now and again. Like, hey, just don't. Just stay home. You know? Yeah. You try. But, you, you're in Vegas. How much traveling do you have to do out? I mean, you have figured out. I mean, you are definitely a creature of habit, from what I understand. Yeah, well, yeah. You could be fighting in Brazil, like you just like we were talking yeah, about earlier. I, I don't you could travel. Be... I mean, you can't make me get on a plane six weeks before a fight. Maybe even eight. I just won't do it. It's not gonna happen. I don't want to break my schedule. I like I like the training at the time I train. You know, and then again, I I also always have uh, a train at fight time for the last month. So if I'm fighting at nine o'clock, I gotta fight at nine o'clock. That's why uh, I sleep in the other room. I don't get up early, you know? Because if you train at like nine o'clock, you don't go to bed till one or two, then you don't get up till 10 or 11, you know? So you have to adjust. How, how long do you do that before you go to sleep? Well, or before a fight? About a month. A month? Three weeks. It takes that long? Yeah. I don't know how long it takes, but that's how long I'm willing to do it. <laughs> One of, yeah, one of, one of the sleep Jamie's studies. How willing to have you do it? Yeah. One of the right, sleep right. studies I just read was uh, is that if you actually exercise the night that that evening that you get there or that you travel, always, that, yeah, always. Th that is the most night. important always. because you will you will adjust within about a day and a half versus if you don't do that, it I can take up plane, to eight days. I take a hot shower, and I do. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Light cardio. Find that for me. You know, something like. But you bring your own step. Jog or maybe an elliptical if they got one. Just something elliptical. Yeah, he is loving that right now. I want to get my heart rate up to about 130, and I want to breathe as much as possible. Do you? This is do you not, take your own heart rate, or is that estimated? I, 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 you're grabbing I, on to, I, I, or are you? I wear the bra. Yeah. The bra monitor, and and this is not about. I'm not doing this cardio for anything athletic. I realize that. No, that no at an extent, this is detraining. I'm teaching my body to go very slowly. I'm teaching my body to breathe and okay, we're here, wake up. That's all, yeah. you know, because I just got off a plane. Mm -hmm. If you said, hey Forrest, I want you to run, I want you to do a burpee. I'm <laughs> sitting on the plane wrong, you can't, you know? So it's a very, I, I, I know in full knowledge what I'm doing, and I like a nice no, half hour. No burpees I travel, Forrest. I always travel, go right to the hotel, Go exercise. Hot shower, yeah, exercise. I call it loose exercising. Check in Chikuzi. the box. Then I find a steak. Yes. Then the last meal. Yeah. So I say I like a hot shower first too. We always that uh, warms the tissue up because yeah. I don't use well, a I, roller. I hate rollers. Star is a proponent of the warm jacuzzi or shower prior to. Yeah. Could you say that again yeah. about rollers? Foam I, rollers. I just hate them. Why? I just don't like them. They irritate me. They don't work. They don't work. I completely agree. Really? No. Nah. Piece of foam. We can do better. PCP with wrapped in. Did you say PCP? Yeah. PCP always works. <laughs> Wait, PVC, Woo! Sorry. PCP. PVC pipe wrapped Little in angel something. dust. That'll that work. brings us to our favorite part of the show. So we finish every interview with a few questions. Yeah. The first one is. What I didn't is, study for these, so. That's right. No problem. What is your last meal on earth? Last meal on earth. I don't think it really matters. Maybe a bunch of tequila. I've never actually had tequila before, but it seems to make people do crazy things. You can't hallucinate on it. <laughs> so, yeah. What? Yes. <laughs> Certain people. It's not chocolate and almonds. Like, this, like if you, you, what thing do you crave? Right. So it's really, not it like, let's get like it. a really good red wine, like a really good Cabernet, and a 
some really good chocolate and almonds. Ah. Or, or, you know, different nuts. It doesn't have to just be almonds. Brazil nut. Yeah, all of them. I'm with you. I'm on some all. exotic. Yeah. I'm with you. This is the last meal, so we might as well make it exotic. If the apocalypse hit, hits, yeah. what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? This. Just chill out. You guys are perfect. I'm going to eat you. You guys look okay, very healthy. Okay, this is actually an important question. Because it's not just you are what you eat, you are what you eat eats, and I know you guys eat real healthy. <laughs> oh, so, you are uh, what you eat eats? It's unfortunately. TM. That's happened. So I can you have like you guys that because I, you're healthy. Well, Brian is grass fed. Yeah, to a um, large degree. Food. I might taste a little gamey. Free, free range, grass fed. <laughs> I might no taste antibiotics. <laughs> so, <laughs> no bovine growth hormone. You are very yeah. healthy. So here, but totally here's the question: you. Do you know what piece of brine you would eat? Do you know? Do you have, do you have that understanding? Uh, We're working on a piece for the yeah, next book about yeah, yeah. what you would eat. I'm gonna go bicep. Really? Oh, well, you actually your arms are a little skinny. I want to eat your bicep, so that looks good. Uh, so let's, uh, let's that's, just let's just start with the leg. Well, let's see what I happens. see. I think that's the problem. So in the movie Alive, he starts eating in the butt. That would be a terrible. All the, I think you got to go filet mignon. That's so ass. Yeah. Right there. Doesn't have. And then the other piece, skirt steak. That's your diaphragm. Do you know yeah. that? I did not. Just saying. I mean, if, if you're really talking about apocalypse, you guys are poorly prepared. That's all I'm talking about. <laughs> no, no, no. I, we look, me and Ash, I'm obviously going to take my next to kill to you so that you can The proper ways it. to prepare people meat. I'm not, I'm not going to say I didn't have a year of anatomy and wasn't. I was the best skinner in the class. Little known fact. I, I've only heard you <coughs> talk about this. But that's, uh, I, I believe you. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, I know. Do you have a hero? Uh, I'm working on it. I, I'm a big Pat Tillman fan, but uh, I'm working on a hero. No, it's legit. You know what? Uh, you know who I don't like is Superman. No, seriously. He's like, like got everything. And he, uh, it's so dramatic. Oh, I can only fly and shoot lasers out of my eyes and breathe storms and be the fastest. He, it's so dumb. There's no, like, you're Superman. Just stop. Oh, I didn't know he could stop. shoot lasers out of his eyes. Yeah. Oh. Dude. Well, I'm sorry. Why? Yeah. I didn't watch enough Superman, obviously. <laughs> Fuck. No, lasers. Dumb. Lasers. lasers. Hey, what else do you want to ask? If you could go back in time and change one aspect of an athletic environment or a competition, what would you change? Uh, well, my first answer was that fight in South Africa where uh, I got my shoulder messed up and it still is. <clears throat> but my second answer would be um, when I walked past the room when I was 20 with the guys just fighting that I wouldn't have walked in and been like, I want to do that. No, I'm kidding. That was actually, that was, I'm very glad I did walk in the room. That was like a people. ninja room. You walked yeah, past Yeah, there was just people ninjas. that was like. That was it. That's how it started. It looks like those guys are just fighting. <laughs> and I walked in and I was like, hey, are you guys fighting? And they were like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> can I join? Can I fight? <laughs> and literally, I was like, are you guys just fighting? They're like, yeah, we're in the middle of it. I was like, can I fight? <laughs> are you working on another book project? Not really. I mean, I have, uh, here's the thing. I had a lot of good notes and informational stuff, and uh, I lost my phone. I didn't lose my phone, I destroyed my phone. Wait a minute, Whoa. is that why you now have a seven pound otter box? I, I had the otter box or whatever on my last phone, but I still destroyed it through it, and they weren't able to recover the data. But I had one of these on my last phone too, like a, we, we, a lot of people believe that you should always wear a weight vest and bodyweight training. So you've got this. Yeah. What else you've got? And then I got, see, I like to balance it out. I put one in each pocket. I'm not going to lie. That is like 19 pounds. It's low, you know, a little drag. A little, a little drag. I see. Not I one. I got an amazing story. Not two. I got an amazing not story. Not three. About this Four, wallet. five, six rubber bands this just to happened. hold. So check this out. I lost this wallet in the hardware store. And uh, a week later, somebody hits me up on Twitter. Hey, Forrest, I got your wallet. Oh, your wallet. So I go in there. My wallet's there. And, and there's like a group of people standing around. They're like, because they've realized it's, you know, it's funny. Wallet. And they're like, yeah, hey, Forrest, blah, blah, you know. And there's, they give me my wallet back. You know how much money was in it? $360. You know how much money was in my wallet when I lost it? $200. $300. <laughs> I lost my wallet, and when I found it, I had $60 more in it. 
<laughs> Didn't you say you just lost some rubber bands? Maybe someone bought rubber bands. They say they took some How was the rubber band And I had three the extra in. rubber bands. Three extra. So, so I go, I tried to give the uh, the people there like a finder's fee, like a couple hundred bucks, and they wouldn't take it. So I went and talked to the manager, and I said, look, man, I left my wallet in your store. It took you eight days to get it back to me. <laughs> when I lost this wallet, there were $300 in it. Do you know how much money's in it? $360. You have a problem here. Sir. <laughs> and I acted real dramatic. And I was like, look, man, I don't know what kind of shit you got going on. Just watch it. <laughs> and then I left. And the guy, like, the people were laughing. But the guy was looking at me like waiting for, like, me to really, like, get upset or something. I don't know. So I just left. It, it became uncomfortable. And I realized that whatever, Andy Kaufman. whatever joke I was, was, was going for was just really missing. And the guy was like, what do you want? What, what? He's like really like intently looking at me like, what do we do that? <laughs> and I was like, ah. I don't know how to react and to I this. And I just left. Muscle confusion. That's why you do that. Muscle confusion. Ladies and gentlemen, Forrest Griffin. I'm, I'm clapping for myself. Yes. I'm clapping for myself. <laughs>